a monster AMD GPU was just leaked and RTX 3060 performance looks incredibly disappointing. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Brobot. Brobot is a free, super fast program that scours the internet searching for restocks of the latest GPUs, CPUs, and consoles to help you find what you're looking for before it goes out of stock. Thanks to Brobot, I was finally able to purchase a PS5 due to its extremely fast speed and in my case, I noticed it was actually minutes faster than all other popular bots I've tried. So if you're looking for a tool that can help you secure that new GPU, CPU, or console, be sure to click the Discord and Telegram links in the description below to find out more. So not too long ago, Paul from over at Red Gaming Tech leaked what appeared to be some information about the 7900 XT or AMD's next flagship GPU and according to his sources, this apparent 7900 XT could be up to to two and a half times faster, or at least that was the performance target for the 7900 XT versus the 6900 XT, and of course, that's an enormous increase in performance, and this apparently comes from drastic increases to the IPC efficiency as well as clock speed gains, and you know, that's a pretty high number, and I'm a little bit dubious as to whether or not they'll actually be able to hit two and a half times faster, but apparently, a lot of these gains also come from the fact that they're going to be switching to what is called a MCM design or multi-chip module. Now, what a multi-chip module is, is they're taking somewhat of a Ryzen approach to GPU manufacturing by taking several different smaller GPUs and then kind of like gluing them together. Now, of course, this does come with some benefits. Uh, namely, you might see uh, somewhat higher clock speeds out of these GPUs since they're actually able to bin them a little bit better. And then on top of that, you might actually be able to just build a bigger GPU because, you know, if you take a look at NVIDIA and AMD's approach right now where they have one giant monolithic die, if there's one little defect in that thing, of course, it doesn't meet the, the actual specifications to become the GPU that they're trying to create. So if you make GPUs bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, they're bound to have some sort of defect somewhere. So at some point, they just can't make GPUs any bigger. So if they're going to continue to make GPUs with more and more cores, at some point, they're going to have to move to an MCM design. So that's the reason why these companies are moving to an MCM design. But there's actually a new leak that just came out from the Twitter leaker Komachi that kind of backs this leak up. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. And then I'll give you my thoughts on this whole thing. So over on Twitter, Komachi shared these two images. And if we take a look at this one, it says that, quote, AMD Instinct MI200 OAM times one MCM special FIO accelerator for HPE Cray EX. Now the thing that sticks out to me most is that MCM. And so if we take the MCM plus the MI200 versus the MI100, what I'm guessing here is they're probably shooting for a doubling in terms of performance because again, if you use the MCM design, they could instead of using one GPU die with 4096 shaders on a seven nanometer process, uh, they could go to the five nanometer process and take two 4096 shader dies and put them together, allowing them to potentially get, you know, essentially double the amount of performance and potentially even higher if they're able to get IPC gains out of it as well. And I think that this would translate into the server space very, very well or for HPE. Uh, that type of workload actually would significantly benefit from the MCM design right now. Now, in terms of the gaming performance, uh, we're talking about what uh, Paul from over Red Gaming Tech leaked a little bit earlier with the 7900X. Is this actually going to show up in the 7900X? And how well is it going to scale? That I don't know 100% for sure, though I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some sort of MCM design coming from AMD in the Radeon GPUs for gamers at some point in the future because it's clear that they are making steps towards the end goal right now with if you take a look at say the 6900 XT and the uh, 6800 XT and the 6800 uh, how they're using the Infinity Cache I think that that would allow them to get rid of a lot of the issues with using a multi-chip module design with GPUs right now because in the past we haven't moved to MCM design yet simply because there's some inherent latency that occurs if you try and connect two different GPUs together so obviously an infinity cache could help that um, they're probably working on various other solutions to it right now but whether or not we're going to see it in the next generation of GPUs for Radeon um, for gamers I'm not entirely sure it would make sense um, now how well would it actually scale that's the bigger question here so getting two and a half times more performance by doubling the cores is going to be incredibly difficult in fact making a GPU with just one monolithic die with double the amount of shaders it's still going to be pretty hard to get double the amount of performance let alone two and a half times more performance so, of course, it's going to be very difficult. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to see that. He did mention there was potentially going to be some IPC increases as well as clock speed gains, which is very, very likely, and that could allow them to get maybe closer to two times performance. But getting two and a half times performance, again, even if they get IPC gains and they get clock speed gains and they double the amount of shaders, even if it's with a monolithic die and there's no extra uh, latency added because of that, um, 
you know, with random gaming workloads, it could be pretty difficult to pull off even two times the performance. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens on that front. Maybe they did find basically a magic way around this whole issue. And there's no latency with the interconnect between these two different GPUs. But again, I'm a little bit skeptical. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw over a 50% gain out of the 7900X, but two and a half times faster. Yeah, I'm not so sure if that's going to be possible. But hey, I could be wrong and maybe they will actually pull it off, in which case that will be incredibly exciting. So here's to waiting for the 7900 XT and hopefully they can actually get enough stock out so that you can actually buy one. But there's one more thing I want to talk about before we wrap this video up and that's the fact that the RTX 3060 just had its performance numbers leaked over on videocards.com and if we go over to their article and take a look at this little chart that they provided here we can see that they have numbers for Fire Strike Extreme, Fire Strike Ultra, Time Spy Extreme, Time Spy, Port Royale and Superposition 1080p Extreme. Now this information comes from RTX 3060s which supposedly do not have resizable bar included so yeah that's gonna potentially allow for a little bit extra performance to be squeezed out of the RTX 3060 but of course you can go in with your current GPUs right now such as the RTX 3080 and the 3090 and uh, sometime after the 3060 releases there should be an optional BIOS which you can upgrade to with those cards as well so you should be able to get a small performance boost basically out of all NVIDIA cards pretty soon here uh, though I would be a little bit careful with flashing your BIOS and hopefully they make it really really easy because if you do something wrong well it could be kind of difficult to recover from a poorly flashed BIOS. But in any case, uh, taking a look here at the numbers, we can see that on average, it does appear to be a little bit slower than the 2060 Super and just a little bit faster than the 2060. And according to them, it's actually only about 12% faster than the 2060 on average, which is very, very disappointing to see because yes, you are getting double the amount of VRAM with this card, which is really nice. And it is coming in at $20 cheaper than the original MSRP of the RTX 2060. But we're forgetting the fact that the 2060 was outrageously expensive at $300 fifty dollars and at 330 dollars the rtx 3060 still in my opinion is very very expensive and you know it's a little bit too expensive for me i would have been a lot more happy with it coming in at like 280 dollars maybe even 300 dollars but 330 dollars is just pushing it a little bit too far in my opinion and to only get an additional 12 percent performance out of that yeah there really should have been a further price cut in my opinion because that's really disappointing and frankly if you compare this to the gtx 960 that came in at a price of 200 us dollars and today that's probably probably more like a little bit closer to $250. So yeah, I think that this is just grossly overpriced. And then if you consider the fact that you may not be able to buy this GPU for less than $400, there were rumors of it coming in at $500 US dollars, uh, $515 US dollars for certain models. And then you add on the fact that it's probably going to be in somewhat low supply and there's going to be very high demand for this card. Frankly, I just wouldn't be trying to buy the RTX 3060 at this point. Obviously, if you really, really want one, um, your best chances of trying to get one is just going to have a bunch of pages open having your your, uh, PayPal and all that uh, sort of payment methods ready on hand if you do want to try and get these because it's going to be very very difficult but you know personally at this point I'm thinking with the high price the low availability and the low performance increase over the 2060 it's probably just not worth it for a lot of gamers to upgrade to unless you're rocking something like a GTX 1060 or 960 in which case honestly I think that maybe a 3050 might be a good upgrade path for you as long as the performance is pretty good and it actually has a decent price tag because again $330 and above, that's more of a 70 class replacer. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RTX 3060 is worth it? Are you still going to try and get one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.